Hi, it's Tuesday, July 2nd. Quick update from the road here. I'm traveling with a laptop and a clip-on mic, so excuse the poor audio quality. Worse than usual, I'm sure, uh, but we'll do the best we can with this setup. This is Hurricane Barrel, been setting records in the Eastern Caribbean, became a Category 5 hurricane last night, the earliest such hurricane to form in the Atlantic on record, and has been a Category 5 hurricane for most of today. But we are starting to see the storm do direct battle with the vertical shear that we've been predicting for days now to beset the storm over the central Caribbean. And as a result, we are seeing some degradation in the core convective structure here. Westerly shear undercutting the outflow is affecting the western eyewall and likely causing lots of downdrafts and dry intrusions that are starting to perturb the core and you're seeing imperfections and asymmetries and a cloud filling eye that isn't as large or clear as it was even earlier today. So we are seeing a weakening of the hurricane and recon data from a mission that's now a couple of hours old as of this recording was showing the weakening trend as confirmed to have begun with the pressure rising several millibars during that mission and eyewall winds decreasing from category five strength to upper category four strength. So the National Hurricane Center has lowered max winds to 155 miles per hour, still an extremely dangerous category four hurricane and that's going to become important very soon as unfortunately barrel will be impacting more land areas as it continues west northwest this is a water vapor satellite loop showing the storm and you can see that there is upper level cirrus radiating outward in most directions from the center and this is not a typical sheared hurricane look so you might wonder why there's so much shear and it's because there's very strong trade winds out of the east in the lower atmosphere, which is helping to steer the hurricane toward the west-northwest, but because the flow aloft is actually roughly calm or only lightly out of the east or the southwest or whatever direction it is, it's very light can, compared to the easterly surface trade winds. And in the net, that equates to a westerly wind shear. And so this is hitting the hurricane in the face now at at least 25 knot strength. And that 25 to 30 knots of shear over the next couple of days will continue to eat away at the hurricane and a weakening trend is expected to persist for a good while here as barrel continues its march. The bad news is that the track is taking it pretty close to Jamaica and we talked yesterday about the risk of nudges in the track and subtleties affecting the risk to these land areas. Over the, la over the last 24 hours we have seen a slight shift toward the north of barrel's motion and so the current official National Hurricane Center forecast, which I'll show you later, does take this essentially over southern Jamaica, and there is a hurricane warning out for the island, and Kingston is right here in the way of the track, and this kind of storm motion could bring intense storm surge along with wind and flooding threats uh, on a track like this. So this is something to watch and prepare for carefully if you're watching from Jamaica, and same with the Cayman Islands downstream from Jamaica. Here's the GFS upper level wind plot, 200 millibar wind, showing this upper level tut, tropical upper tropospheric trough feature that we've been highlighting for the last few days. It's draped across Cuba and there is a little bit of southwesterly flow over Cuba and it's having the effect of generating nearly quiescent flow over the hurricane. But as we said, strong trade winds underneath means that there is a westerly shear here, even though the storm is underneath of this upper level ridge over the Caribbean right now. So as this comes toward the west, the model shows weakening, the pressure value fills as it moves near Jamaica, and it continues west-northwest. And what eventually happens is the tut actually splits into two pieces by the time this gets toward the Yucatan Peninsula. And the reason for that is this trough is thinning out right here. It's actually weakening over time. It's a pretty weak upper level trough to begin with. And the hurricane is throwing out upper level outflow from the thunderstorms, that upper level cirrus that we see it throwing out on this satellite loop here. That northwestward motion of that air is eroding the upper level trough. So eventually, as this passes the Cayman Islands and gets into the northwestern Caribbean, you see the tut split into two pieces, a cutoff upper low over the western gulf, and the rest of it is well off to the east, stage right. And so we see a shift in the upper level wind direction to southeasterly, which is more aligned with the near easterly or southeasterly surface winds. And in this case, this lowers the vertical shear value and conditions go from hostile to a little more favorable for barrel just as it's approaching the Yucatan Peninsula on these model forecasts. And so we're about to see a significant weakening of the storm, but it may have a window to re-strengthen before potentially impacting northeastern Mexico or Belize 
at the end of the uh, the end of the week here on Friday or late Thursday night. Now it is going to cross over the Yucatan Peninsula and continue its journey generally toward the west-northwest, but this is where things start to get pretty uncertain going into the weekend. There's going to be some subtle interactions between the storm's resilience, how much it weakens over the next couple of days due to passing over the tall mountains of Jamaica potentially, and the impact of the vertical shear, how strong it is on the other side of all of that will affect how it moves because the upper level flow is a little bit more toward the north here than the surface flow is. And for that reason, a stronger and thus deeper or taller vortex would angle a little bit more toward the north here, potentially passing over the northern Yucatan Peninsula instead of the southern Yucatan Peninsula. And that will matter a whole lot once it crosses over to the other side. Here's a look at why. This is the GFS 500 millibar mid-level steering flow, and you're going to be tracking this big ridge building over the southeastern United States, which is guiding the hurricane generally towards the west-northwest. You'll see it past Jamaica on this model, past Grand Cayman, and then what happens here is this ridge starts to weaken a little bit and shift towards the east in response to a broad-scale trough that starts digging into the Great Plains. And for that reason, the steering flow starts to angle a little bit more toward the north, but it's really dependent on where the hurricane is launching from by the time we get to Friday. If it's coming off the Yucatan Peninsula far enough north, it may continue gaining latitude and threaten the northwestern Gulf of Mexico. That could mean northern Mexico or Texas, and the U.S. Gulf Coast could be threatened in that scenario. But if it crosses farther down, say if it's a weaker storm, then it would likely continue west more into eastern Mexico proper. This is what we see on the European model, which is a little bit weaker than the GFS by the time it arrives in the Yucatan Peninsula, moves ashore near Chetumal, Mexico, and continues farther south into the southern Bay of Campeche. And that's kind of where we see the storm move versus the GFS, which launches a little bit farther north and continues to move farther north by the end of its run. I didn't show you the end there, but the GFS is far enough north that it actually moves towards southern Texas on this particular run, and it, it varies. You can see that the GFS and the Euro are different, and all models have kind of disagreed on this. We're talking about five days out by the time we get to Sunday when this is happening on this model. So of course, uncertainty remains high here, and it depends on where the storm is, and where the storm is at the Yucatan Peninsula depends on how strong it is and how resilient it holds up, or how well it holds up to the shear and the hostile environment that it's in over the next couple of days. This is the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center, and uh, as I noted, the track has nudged a little bit to the north since yesterday. Yesterday's track was more like this near the southern edge of where the cone is now. So it has moved a little bit farther north. This is unfortunate for Jamaica. The track is now essentially over Kingston and the southern Jamaican coastline. So hurricane warning is out, and for good reason. We know the hurricane's weakening. That is, of course, good news, but it may not weaken fast enough uh, to prevent hurricane conditions, and in fact, this could still be a major hurricane, with the Hurricane Center currently calling for a Category 3 or 4 storm by the time it nears the island. Let's see if the new update has come in. There might be a new forecast. Not just yet, but once this video is out, a new forecast will have updated here. But as of this last forecast at 2 p.m., uh, this was expected to be a major hurricane with winds of at least 115 miles per hour as it passes Jamaica. So this is going to be a serious storm that folks need to be making final preparations for as it is approaching quickly and by Wednesday morning you will already have winds arriving. This is the timing plot from the National Hurricane Center showing the earliest reasonable arrival time Wednesday 8 a.m. in eastern Jamaica and then for the Cayman Islands you're talking about midday Wednesday to Wednesday evening is when they start showing up there. So only about a half day later this is continuing to move briskly toward the northwest, and so there isn't that much time left, but being prepared for the worst and then hoping for the best is generally the best approach here. You can also see that there are some probabilities along the southern coastline of Hispaniola for tropical storm force winds. There is a tropical storm warning out. You can see that in orange, the wind field from Barrel is wider on the north side, and as this moves toward the northwest, you can see how that will intersect the coastline, and so we're likely to see some tropical storm conditions, especially in these spiral bands that you can see already moving ashore with strong thunderstorms, they will bring flash flooding potential with heavy rains in the tall terrain of Hispaniola as well. So flooding and tropical storm conditions are likely 
in parts of the Dominican Republic and Haiti. And on this forecast, the Hurricane Center does show this changing from a major hurricane to just an H, indicating weakening to a Category 1 or 2 hurricane, and then continuing to weaken as it crosses the Yucatan Peninsula, which will, of course, disrupt the storm due to land passage. And then you can see they show a tropical storm in the western Gulf of Mexico. Again, the future here is pretty murky. We don't really know if it's going to be on the southern side or the northern side yet. A northern track probably means the storm was a little stronger to begin with, and less time over a thinner part of the Yucatan Peninsula would also mean a stronger storm later on in the Gulf. So this is something to watch, and if you're in the northwestern Gulf of Mexico, do keep tabs on this and the Hurricane Center forecasts at hurricanes.gov over the next few days as things could shift around and there could certainly be changes to this over time. So the risk is there for both eastern Mexico and the northwestern Gulf Coast of the United States, and still for Belize as well. We have seen the track shift a little bit north of you in the last 24 hours, but if it shifts back the other way, we would put Belize back in the target zone. So everyone in these areas, uh, stay safe and be prepared just in case barrel comes your way. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.